Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to do a follow-up to our video yesterday talking about Aquaman The Lost Kingdom. The reviews are starting to trickle in, and they're not good. Mm -mm. Uh, did we expect the reviews to be good for this movie? They were holding them to the last possible minute, and it looks like uh, Aquaman is a stinker. It's rotten. It's at 38 39%. And uh, it's, I don't know, guys, it's not looking good. The box office is trending down. We're going to talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, get woohoo if you do. Woohoo. And uh, yeah, this one looks like it's going to reek like dead but, fish. But you know what doesn't reek? What doesn't reek? People who use Scentbird. They're the Stay sponsor of the video. Stay tuned. Hey guys, before we get into the video any further, we have to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Scentbird. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription that lets you choose a new designer fragrance to try every month for just $17, $17. Every month you get to pick what you want to receive, so there are no surprises. They have over 600 perfumes and colognes and a lot of unisex options. They carry such brands as Gucci, Prada, and Versace, as well as indie labels like Skylar, Heretic, and Confessions of Rebel. You can be sure that you're getting a premium scent each month. With each fragrance, you'll get a 30-day supply so you can try out fragrances before committing to a full-size bottle. That can cost over $150 and some are even $300 to $500. Bucks. So we're going to open these up, and I don't know what I'm doing, so Squid King is going to help because he's Hello. actually used Scentbird before. Kiki Sparkles is also here. You're going to get this little case that's really cool because it's actually reusable each month. So it's magnetic. It just opens and closes like that. Um, and you can swap out your fragrance whenever you'd like. And I like this case, too, because it comes with this little lock. So you can swipe between, like, oh, now it's locked, and you oh, can't cool. spray. Now it's locked, and you can spray. Um, and on top of that, each order also comes with these little cards that give you a bit of background for the scent as well as the scent notes. So for instance, this is the Gucci and it has uh, notes of Roman chamomile, coral jasmine, and vanilla. And it also shows you what the full bottle looks like if you decide to purchase like the entire bottle. That's the one you like. That is the one I like. It smells like a really clean smell. Um, this one is, was it, Boho Boco? sea salt and caramel. Now this one has notes of, it's a spicier scent. So it's got lemon, sea salt, pink pepper, seaweed, and salted caramel. Um, if you like spicy scents, you'll like this one. The next one is the Perfumer Story. And this one is more of an amber scent, but it actually smells kind of like a, a nice baby powder or like a, it's a light, airy scent. And it's, it's actually quite pretty. And this one has amber, sandalwood, and musks. So it's a more musky, you know, baby powder, gentle scent. But the favorite for sure is the Gucci. All right, guys, so thank you very much, Scentbird, for the sponsorship. Just use my coupon code CLOWNFISH for 55% off at Scentbird. It's a little over $7 for your first month, available in the USA and Canada. Okay, guys, we're going to get back into it. Uh, thank you so much. We can use them before and like them. So yeah, he did. we're he like, did. yeah, this is one we know that we've actually used and, and know that they're good. So speaking of paying the bills, I don't think Warner Brothers is going to be able to pay the bills uh, very well. This mm -mm. movie is, is That's not... why they're talking about merging. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll talk about. Yeah, we'll talk about the box office first. Yeah, the video yesterday uh, and that was kind of out of the blue. Warner Brothers and, and Paramount are talking about possibly merging. Uh, there was rumors before that uh, Warner Brothers and Universal would merge or Universal would buy Warner Brothers, which makes a lot more sense because they could get Harry Potter for the theme parks mm -hmm. and DC Comics for the theme parks and kick all the Marvel characters out. But uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen here, but we'll talk about the box office and we'll go back to these abysmal numbers. Escapist says Aquaman 2 is projected to drown at the box office. Uh, like the baby? Oh, oh, I don't know if they drown the baby in this one. I don't know if they kill the baby. I in hope this one. not. Um, they did in the comic books, but he was like five or six. That's I don't still know. a baby. That's still somebody's baby. <laughs> Everybody. I don't care if you're 50, you're still somebody's baby. That's true. That's true. Aquaman The Lost Kingdom is projected to sink at the domestic box office over opening weekend, according to Variety. It's going to do between 35 and 40 million. So they're already going down. 
on this one because they said, well, at least 40 million. It'll it'll be fine. So it's going to do less than the marbles. It's much lower than (laughs) it's much lower than the 67 million. The first film took in over the first weekend in 2018. That wasn't great either. But no, no, but it wound up doing supposedly it wound up doing like a billion dollars at the box office. But it had to be overseas. One that I think it was one that, you know, it was word of mouth type thing. Yeah, we went to go see the first one in the theater. I thought it was okay. Uh, it was okay. It was okay. It wasn't the best thing ever, but it was all right. Most people just go to watch Jason Momoa, let's be honest. Yeah. Something to keep in mind is the original Aquaman did perform exceedingly well overseas. Yeah, there we go. The movie earned more than $800 million internationally, which when combined wow. with the $335 million domestic gross, put it above a billion. It's entirely possible a good performance internationally will save Aquaman, too. I wouldn't hold my breath. No, no it's possible, though. We're going to be fair. It said, for comparison, The Flash opened to $55 million and only earned $270 million worldwide. Well, that would book. be counting the $55 million. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, that's not good. Um, they said, there are a few reasons Aquaman 2 looks doomed. Well, the reviews aren't good. Uh, the well, DC, well, now you finally get them. Now you finally get them. On the, the day of, of preview night, you finally get the review. So if you already got your ticket, well, tough luck. Tough luck, guys. Yeah, they're saying a, a big factor is people are over the DCEU. Um, well, there's no point to get invested no. because they already told you they're undoing all of this. Yeah. Um, so this is the New York Post. Aquaman Lost Kingdom review. Good riddance to the DCEU. Ouch. Ouch. Okay, let's look at some of these other ones. Uh, so let's dive in here. This is a consequence. Did anyone involved with the making of Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom even want to make an Aquaman movie? Even Jason Momoa, a guy whose entire vibe is I'm happy to be here, visibly struggles to wring any sense of enjoyment out of the scene. <laughs> Not one part of this movie, the effects, the story, or the emotional core works. Everything is recycled from other superhero movies. It's time to give the genre a an at sea burial. Yeah, I think that's part of the problem too. It is all like coming across as being recycled. Now, there are some good reviews, too. You know, we'll, we'll let them speak for themselves. This is a video about bad reviews. <laughs> so well, I think it's fair to mention a couple good ones. Okay, fine. AV Club says, it's the kind of film that wants to leave everything it has on the field, and that produces a kinetic, often scattered, but nonetheless entertaining popcorn movie. So basically, it's, 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 it's a mindless, entertaining popcorn movie, which is what people say they want, though, sometimes. Yeah. So it might resonate with some people. A hacked up mess, says the rap. And that's uh, not just the editing, but boy, is it also the editing. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this is the New York Post. You can tell from every second of the sequel just how disinterested DC Studios is in this film and in the future of this character. Uh, 1.5 out of 4. Wow. Uh, rife with lazy one-liners that wouldn't pass muster in a sitcom writer's room with gags like baby Arthur Jr. urinating in his dad's face. But that actually happened During a diaper change. Yes, it happened to me. I was, I, it happened to me. The very first time I changed Squid King's pants, he pissed on me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but it happens to like every parent. That's why most know? parents of, of boys eventually learn to just lay a wipe down so that, you know, it doesn't, does it, it goes down, not up. I actually, I actually learned uh, that you have to sort of put the diaper like you're going in, like you have to cover it like a, a, a pot that's boiling that's over. What I, that's what I use the wipe for. Yeah. yeah. And you just sort of like, just in case, here's my diaper shield to make sure I don't get pissed on. But uh, um, yeah. continuing inverse to give it a, a positive, but I don't. A Jules Verne pulp adventure juiced up on a cocktail of testosterone, <laughs> adrenaline, hell? and Guinness beer. What the hell does that said, mean? Okay, but it's done by a. a it looks like, is that a woman? I think yeah, so. Yeah, it's a and woman. It's what, like, does that, what does that mean? I don't what know. What does that mean? Dude, bro, get his beer. Oh, my God. I want to see it. say Bud Light. I want to see a testosterone-fueled Jules Verne adventure. Well, they're um, saying, and if it is that, then it might resonate with audiences. I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, USA Today said it was all right. Uh, San Francisco Chronicle said it was all right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you see the next one? That went As the old way <laughs> sinks into oblivion, <laughs> at least one leaves us a little damp with excitement. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's funny. It's just I'm getting I'm getting juicy thinking about that Superman movie reboot. <laughs> Uh, felt I love this one. This is a Daily Telegraph. It felt like entire clumps of gray matter were giving up the gig in disgust and abseiling out of my ears. Ouch. <laughs> Not good. Uh, the trouble is that Momoa's selling point as an actor is how natural and physical he is, whereas nothing in Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom seems real. The first one didn't either. The first one looked like a Mm-mm. giant video game cutscene, mm-hmm. you know. 
Um, it just goes on. It's like it's formatic, which, you know, you know, not surprised there. No. Uh, struggles with the juvenile tone, a pendulous script, and a cast who can't mount the shifting sands of those challenges, including Amber Heard. You have to sift through like a cat box. Uh, it's a fun, but not great. It's fun, that was, but not that, was great. A, that was a fresh. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of 124 long minutes, both film and the audience are deeply immersed in something, but it isn't seawater. Ouch. <laughs> Yeah, this is not good, guys. Um, this is absolutely going to affect the box office take because people are going to look at this and be like, oh, I was on the fence about it. But now that the reviews are coming out, I think I'm going to skip it because it's going to wind up on uh, HBO Max probably in another month or two. Anyway, probably. So. Honestly, you just wait. I thought it was funny. Though. The one from that girl was the best best written. If you're going to get somebody to, the, to, to get their butts to the theater, the Jules Verne Pulp Adventure juiced up on a cocktail of testosterone, adrenaline, and Guinness beer is the most intriguing one I've seen. That would probably get me to go. He rides a submarine, like on top of the submarine, down to the bottom of the ocean. He jumps and he, the shark. He j- literally jumps the shark. And the ocean's on fire, and then he freaking punches a squid in the face. And then he drinks its ink. Oh. Yeah, okay, that last part, maybe not so much. But, like, that would be a more exciting movie. Like, if you had, like, because that was a selling point with Momoa's Aquaman, is he was a badass. He wasn't just the stupid friend that talked to fish, you know, the lame Justice League member. He was, like, badass Aquaman. And that's what people want to see. They want to see him punching more fish in the face. Punch a shark. <laughs> There's so many jokes, but we're going to be Like, good. he should just, like, pick up a shark and just, like, a freaking huge shark and just, like, start throwing sharks at people. Like, that would be awesome. And give him a hook hand while you're at it, because he had a hook hand in the comic for a while. Why? Did it uh, get bit off by a shark? It got gnawed off, yeah. For real? I think, I think so. I think that's why. I don't happened. want to read the comic. Yeah, the, yeah the, I'm trying to remember. Comic, it's about the line of characters, the one I'd least want to read would be Aquaman. Yeah, well, that was the problem. So <laughs> like, I'm trying to remember. See, I never really, I was never into DC as much as I was Marvel, but in the 90s, he had a hook hand because nobody was reading Aquaman. So they're like, let's give him a hook hand and a beard and long hair and make him badass. So they kept the beard and long hair and the badassery, but they took the hook hand away. Yeah, okay. he's, he's got his hand back. But I remember like the action figures had the hook hand and everything. I'm like, what the hell happened to, uh, to Aquaman? It's like, well, he, he was a pirate for a while. A very angry pirate. All right. So there we go, guys. Uh, it's not looking too good. No, it's really not. Yeah. And they're, and they're, yeah, they're, they're lowering the projections. Oh, They're yeah. basically saying we're counting on the, the overseas market and, you know, anymore. I mean, it's possible. I'm not going to say it's not, but it's just been so unable to predict what the foreign box office is going to do. Because even movies they thought were going to do really well, foreign didn't. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I'm not I don't have much hope for this one, but I don't think anybody does at this point. <laughs> oh, that was trending. Fire David Zaslav. <laughs> Why? Because because Aquaman's bust like. Oh my oh, god! The merger. Oh yeah, probably the merger. I don't know. It, it's just, it's over, guys. Like I think everybody knows DC's over, and DC. Look, they've they've kind of run it into the ground anyway. Because you had the movies running alongside like multiple CW shows and multiple, you know, cartoons, and there's just a, a glut of DC. It's like they did with 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 Marvel yep. at Disney. It's the same thing. It's just that one's DC and one's Marvel. Yeah, I actually want to watch that Batman, uh, that Batman Christmas special before I watch Aquaman too. I don't want to watch any of it, but you can, you may, you if you want to torture yourself, you go ahead and be my guest. All right, guys. So we're gonna wrap this up. Yep. Again, uh, thank you very much, Scentbird, for sponsoring this video. We'll talk to you later. Bye.